Welcome. As part of the series where we have been in conversation with certain remarkable individuals who have made it to the hallowed portals of IITs, today I have yet another such personality with me. And I present to you Om Dehla, AIR 73, and uh, currently in his third year of computer sciences at IIT Delhi. Welcome, Om. Uh, beautiful name that you have, very spiritual name that you have, and it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you? Glad to be here, um, and I'm doing fine. Wonderful. Really. So, uh, Om, uh, first thing that I want to know is where did it all begin from? It's uh, more like an instinctive drive for challenge for me. Oh. That, uh, that like drive of challenging myself, finding greater opportunities to challenge myself. Uh, constantly improving, striving yeah. for better, right? Yes, yes, yes. Constantly improving and uh, striving for better. Finding mistakes in myself, improving that. That's all. And right. then stretching myself further so that I can uh, go on and go on uh, as I hmm, hmm. improve myself. Hmm. In that way, I found uh, JE or more like mathematics and science as a logically challenging uh, subject. Yeah, yeah. It, that it tests your thinking abilities. It tests your. But when did you realize this? When did you feel that you have this kind of a uh, of a frame of mind? Um, close to in seventh class, I guess I okay. started. Uh, going outside my school sub syllabus and then looking at tougher problems and things like that okay, uh, okay. in print particular to physics and maths and then i thought okay these are the things i so, like so you I had like. a thought process that science and maths is something as subjects which challenge you correct yeah okay so then what happened how did you kind of take your uh, journey further at uh, like studying further and then uh, so one thing I felt I was limited by my school environment that okay. I couldn't challenge myself more okay. in a limited uh, area. Wonderful. So I so the avenues that uh, are available down the line are maybe J. Okay. That's what I found. Okay, so this is a science-oriented subject uh, like uh, syllabus, and it is a challenge, hmm, hmm, a world-known challenge, hmm, hmm, particularly uh, every science oriented person in my year would give that test mm -hmm. and it will be a really great challenge to myself and uh, you know you to, you to know where i stand okay in okay. terms of okay. competitiveness mm -hmm. and uh, so as a challenge it comes in competitive nature mm -hmm. that comes in hand to hand mm -hmm. uh, going on uh, so there were olympiads in between ntscs so uh, these Olympiads and smaller milestone exams, I'd say, uh, were also there. And then they were for uh, making me realize where I stand now hmm. at that point of time. Hmm. And how much scope of improvement is there. Hmm. But In, um, uh, one, one point I would want to draw your attention to here is, right, what happens is uh, most of the students do have this fair enough interest in one or two subjects like in your case it was science and maths so yeah good you were identified and you were clear that these are the two subjects that I have an interest in but what next how did you map your potential or did you do that the question is also that whether because end of the day the environment you were to then was a school was a limited uh, set of students around and J being a national level competitive standing. So what enabled you to take a confident decision and a serious decision that yes, I am gonna prepare for JEE? -E? What was it that? How did it happen? A greater avenue. I tried to shift it from school hmm. to a larger avenue of challenges. Hmm. Uh, that came with uh, smaller Olympiads and I'd say I gave the Big Bang Edge test from Fidji okay. and then joined Fidji through that. Okay. So, a test results from that test. From also, the Big Bang test. From the Big Bang test hmm. also gave me an idea that, okay, I have a potential. Hmm. I have to refine it, hmm. definitely. Hmm. And then, uh, so I shifted to a larger avenue that is... So, uh, there was a scientific input available to you through Big yeah. Bang as to what was your potential and what was the scope of improvement, right? Yeah. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Great, great. So, um, uh, having decided to set on this journey for IIT uh, preparation, what do you think? What was the role of guidance? What was form of guidance you took? What was the role of that guidance towards your ultimate success? Guidance is definitely necessary okay. and particularly right guidance. Okay. And uh, I did find very good guidance from Fidji okay. in terms of uh, review tests, in terms of supplementary book suggestions from the faculty and then even person to person guidance that, okay, this is your potential and this is what you have to aim for, these are your mistakes, this is what you have to aim to improve on and so things like that, uh, a constant sense of uh, engagement hmm. with the faculty. Hmm. Uh, does give you a right idea hmm. to where to improve on hmm. and so my emphasis on improvement is al always there hmm. and uh, so that these uh, I joined Fidji in 10th class hmm. so I had a year of Fidji before the NTS exam which hmm. would be a major milestone hmm. Hmm. towards the first mi uh, milestone the, yeah the first major but milestone. was it defined in when, when you started your preparation with Fidji where those goals set that okay, NTC is going to be there or KPPY is going to be there or senior Olympiads are going to be there. Were you also focusing on those scholastic exams? I was not focusing on those exams. They were uh, there for me to like test myself at an end as a rough manner. Hmm. Okay, so my end goal is JE. Hmm. Definitely the syllabus is different. Hmm. But I'd say the people, a lot of people will give, who give NTSC and hmm. who achieve something in NTSC they are a lot of them are the same people that I'll find in JE exam mm -hmm. so compared to them where do I stand I'll have a good idea mm -hmm. if I do give the NTSC exam with a thorough preparation or mm -hmm. at least a really good mm -hmm. amount of preparation mm -hmm. given to that exams mm -hmm. and uh, so if those milestones uh, Fidji did provide guidance for those milestones also mm -hmm. even curated to them uh, particularly NTSC, KVPY and then uh, the, the syllabi that uh, is there in other, the exams. Uh, the books were structured in a way that uh, you could conceptually learn things and then apply it in problems and then okay. the problems got tougher and tougher so that you improve your Conceptual understanding. Conceptual teaching was there. Yeah, the fundamentals. Concept. The fundamentals are there because uh, one thing is that these exams have new questions. Oh, oh. So there will be a no concept of oh I have solved this question I know the answer I know how to solve this okay. there is no concept of that okay. the you have to think how to solve it and then solve it then and there okay so that only comes with conceptual learning you need to know the concept so that you can apply it yourself hmm. not knowing the answer and not knowing how to so you have to think about that hmm. and the hmm. in the exam itself true concept clearing uh, con and doubts the notes that were provided, they were very fundamentally oriented towards those concepts and not to like to solve any any sort of problem hmm. that is. Was there also any tracking in terms of, uh, look, we started in 10th, JE was three years away. Yeah. So uh, was there also any tracking in terms of how you're progressing? Like yeah. you said initially, there was some goal setting done. Yeah. So was there also a mapping of the goals, whether you're on track or you're not? And how was that? Yeah, there were uh, phase tests that happened in mm. phases and, and then there are review tests and there are like AITS that whole all, India, all test India test series. Mm -hmm. So so these all center based tests and then all India based tests that they give a idea of where you stand. Cons constantly they give you an idea of where you stand currently and then you give the next set to see how you improve. And so you take corrective actions in yeah. the time. Okay. So okay. at any time you have, you, you should know the, how, where you should correct yourself hmm. because these tests are necessary for that. Wonderful. Otherwise, you'll not know where to correct yourself. So great. We are in con conversation with Om, uh, who is currently in his third year in IIT Delhi. So Om, uh, in this rigorous preparation for JE, one of the toughest exam on the face of earth, was there stress and tension which came on the way? I am looking at the kind of suicides which are happening these days and I am sure this, this, this journey is full of stress and tension. How did you manage that? How did you keep yourself motivated? So, uh, 
it's very sad that these suicides are happening and yeah. we must work our way to find the root cause behind the suicides and then uh, that stress you have to work with that stress why that stress is coming and then you should minimize it definitely okay, so minimize I mean, it's not to acceptable yeah, it's not. suicide should yeah. not happen minimize the stress so that suicide, suicide comes to null suicide right. comes to null right, right. yeah and i'd say first of all it's good be, best to know the distinction between pressure and stress okay okay so the pressure is always there so it's a tough preparation and uh, i'll say the the pressure you apply on a coal hmm. it'll lead to a diamond hmm. 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 but a stress hmm. might break that hmm. so it's a important distinction between the need of a pressure which leads to stress and the need of a pressure that leads to improvement and motivation a, a very profound statement by om pressure would be there if you have to become a diamond if to achieve something it cannot be a cake walk pressure would be there but that pressure is positive not the stress which is actually killing it so there's a very thin line between both but we need to understand that very profound statement om yeah please carry on yeah so uh, for the pressure comes from first of all the expectations that we set for ourselves and then the expectations that the ecosystem puts in which at times are unrealistic definitely these are there are unreasonable expectations such as uh, there are 1.5 million aspirants and there are only 100 top ranks hmm. so definitely everyone achieving that top 100 is unreasonable yes. so you cannot put unreasonable expectations on someone who does not have a potential or uh, who does not have that interest in that way who wants to go there true, so true. that unreasonable expectations put upon by friends family society etc so those those lead to stress hmm. so so it that expectation is itself is a pressure but make it unreasonable hmm. and then it leads to stress stress if it's a reasonable expectation to achieve your potential to achieve the best of your potential that that is a reasonable hmm. expectation hmm. now this motivates a person to achieve that potential because they have that in them so they'll constantly improve tapping into their and potential for it. yeah so they're tapping into their potential they'll strive for it so one must identify that potential and then strive to optimize that potential hmm. Hmm. going further is just uh, putting stress perfect perfect and how does the academic system or the associated yeah. ecosystem in an academic environment uh, so, contribute towards this yeah so uh, i'd say the faculty that has been teaching for a long time 10 years 12 years or maybe less more. maybe more yeah. so those have they, they have the experience of dealing with students and they have the experience for we are preparing for 3 4 years they have the experience of teaching for 10 years so they know how students think or how students perform so they know the potential they can see certain potential in individual students and they are also supported by certain scientific tools yeah the review test the face test the, the these tests they these tools they give you an idea of that potential and how much has been left untapped and how much is there already so so the, the scope of improvement and stuff like that you see through those tests mm, mm. and the teacher will no more because they can see tests of 20 students mm. but if you give them let's say 50 students 100 students there won't be a feedback mechanism between them mm. a person cannot manage 100 students mm. it's it's also unreasonable for them to manage mm. 100 students very true not possible it's not possible so a small batch size let's say a batch size of 20 that way you can have a one to one interaction between the faculty the faculty can uh, know how which individual person is performing or underperforming which which person needs more motivation mm. which needs some prep talk i remember my maths faculty calling me sometimes when i was underperforming mm. a bit mm. at some points mm. uh, due to those tests they, mm. they have those results they can see okay they can ask us okay how are the results going do you feel satisfied by them and if if they feel that we are having a certain bit of stress they can give more guidance because mm. they are more connected to us 
in a small batch size oh, oh, oh. and they can put okay in, instead of doing this if if i cannot find a way my mistakes where i am going wrong oh. they can guide us okay i think you can try this maybe they are wrong here because oh. they'll have they have more experienced teaching oh, students oh, they have oh, oh. they have 20 sets of examples oh, each oh. year yeah wait, wait i have only my example hmm oh, hmm oh, hmm oh. so that small batch size gives you a feedback loop between the faculty and the student uh, which leads us more towards tapping into our potential because the faculty will also know our potential and will not put unreasonable expectations hmm. Hmm. so the point i'll emphasize is being reasonable and unreasonable hmm. in terms of your expectations from your own self in terms of expectation in terms of uh, pressure that you are getting from the ecosystem in terms of uh, challenges you are putting here for yourself or the challenges the society is putting for them which points to one important thing that it's important to choose the right academic system um which nurtures yes which it's always a feedback mm-hmm. you should have a feedback mechanism between the academic environment and you you should know where are you going wrong you should get help to know where are you going and wrong and feedback which is scientifically so yeah. from testing we are talking about you are yeah. talking about those analysis most yes. the tests definitely these test you'll know you're underperforming because you have given a test hmm, hmm, you hmm. score less you say okay you can correct it yeah you just say oh maybe i could have got gotten this question right but i did it hmm. what was the what what went wrong during hmm. the exam hmm. Hmm. so these things uh that you get to know when you give an exam a mock exam hmm. Hmm. was finally you well, have to that's only one chance that's only one chance you have yes. to give give and keep giving mock exams true, true. keep testing yourself keep getting feedback from the faculty hmm. and getting feedback from faculty is the most important aspect of finding the right academic environment hmm. the right feedback proper amount of feedback okay curated feedback i'd say perfect perfect yeah so uh, reflecting back on your preparation journey uh, what were the key strategies or key study techniques that you think worked the best for you if you could just share a bit about this um my strategy was uh, more about maximizing the productive time okay as productive time i define as uh, when you study for a longer period of time you you get to get uh, tired mm-hmm. and then let's say you productivity reduces productivity reduces you you'll take more time to do the same stuff that you could do in, at your maximum capacity mm-hmm. uh so that uh, period of time let's say at a stretch starts from 1 hour or 2 hour and then you keep stretching that time you mm-hmm. work for that time and you just tightly stretch it and then take breaks oh, oh, oh. so you take frequent breaks and then you and you try to stretch that time in between the breaks oh, oh. so that uh, ideally should go more than 3 hours because 3 uh, hours is your exam oh. so you definitely have to be have at your maximum yes. for that 3 hours so you take breaks frequent breaks be at, be at your maximum productivity so at to not to waste time oh. because if you're working at a tire mine you take longer and then it will just It's, it's not i agree i, I agree yeah hmm. and uh, that uh, combined with uh, mock tests that were provided by fitji past year tests also of fitji that were provided by faculty so to practice on our own so you do a mock test in a timed manner hmm. so that will get you get your more idea of how, are you fully productive in 3 hours hmm. Hmm. and then you also know from those exams that where are you lacking oh. so in terms of revision you can go to that lacking subject the lacking okay. lacking topics okay okay so that you don't waste time on those topic that you are that are already strong one that you are solving so they will be in any case tested in future also yeah they, they'll all those topics will be keep testing over and over and over so it's not like so at particular time at your top one topic is at a week you revise that and then the topic that you were strong it will again be tested in the next test oh, which okay. which would be very soon oh. so those topics will be on your fingertips i'll say and yes. so it will be ingrained in you and then you don't have to revise them because in the test solving those papers is a sort of revision in itself oh. that you go through those concepts solve and solve a question wonderful uh so 
I'd say be at your maximum capacity, uh, productivity, 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 and then uh, stretch that maximum productivity time to at least three hours. If you can stretch it more, it's beneficial for your pre preparation because you can prepare at a larger stretch mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So these things were my uh, strategy. I but, but what 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 was the way of recreation for you? How did you take breaks in between? How did you uh, kind of uh, get into the other aspects of life? Um, something would be, uh, I'd say, a bit of sports or a bit of just normal resting, sleeping, taking an afternoon nap. These things relax your brain, so you can go back to your maximum productivity mm -hmm. and. Something you should enjoy. And how did your academic system or your system at Fiji take the fact that you were a sports player? Uh, uh, just for information, Om is also a national level player and has played at zonal level uh, handball. That's the sport you pursue, handball. And uh, has been at a zonal level, not a mean achievement. So, uh, Om... How was the response of your teachers to you playing uh, professional sports, which would take some time, definitely? I, it's more like about time management, how well you manage hmm. your productive time. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, so definitely there was uh, some support with because people, some ecosystems tend to pressure a student that you should not waste time, hmm. 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 only do study. Hmm. Oh. That is wrong. Oh. Because you have to relax. Oh. How do you relax is up to a person. Oh. Oh. My way of relaxing through a sport was more of a also a health oriented purpose. Oh. And in a healthy body resides a healthy mind. Things oh. like that. Oh. We can go on. And so these, as long as you manage time right, you can perform well in both academics and otherwise. Oh. So you have to go in hand in hand because if you're taking pressure and pressure and pressure and are still studying and not doing something you enjoy side by side as a stress relief. Oh, oh. Again, stress, that pressure converts to stress. Very true, very true, very true. You have to vent it out somewhere. You have to vent it out. You have to keep moving forward, but not as a grumpy child um, I don't want to move forward why am I moving forward though someone is pushing me I'm moving forward hmm. that leads to stress so that's a self-motivation you're talking about yeah. self-motivation here self -motivation. being a motivated person on your own and uh, the ecosystem has to be equally supportive right yeah because without that if the ecosystem pressures you then you get more into that spiral of downturn if they don't allow you to go to the field how can you play? So you didn't have such experiences. I didn't have such experiences. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So, so guys, uh, what what Om means to say is it's it's extremely important to have a balanced uh, lifestyle, give equal importance to sports, give equal importance to whatever whatever extracurricular activities you are interested in. You have to make adjustments, but you have to you don't have to compromise. You don't have to eliminate those things out of your life. If you're in that kind of an academic system. I believe that's the right academic system for you. So, um, uh, what do you think and how much How much was the contribution and impact of your academic system, your institute, your teachers towards your success? It's invaluable. So, okay. I cannot put how much to it. Hmm. It is really invaluable experience for me. And uh, the Fiji system and the teacher system that they have will selected staff, great staff, great teaching, great methods, great methods to quantify our potential, mm. the tests they mm. have, the weekly tests, even small tests, that, that, that those are definitely very important for managing a weekly monit monitoring the for every student. For every student. And the FIDG system gives the teacher, how good of a teacher that you have you can not manage 50 people you definitely have to give the teacher also the avenue to perform at their best capacity the fit system does give that to a teacher because they can manage 20 students and a smaller batch and these well-selected staff they 
teach you how to study hmm. Hmm. this hmm. Hmm. this system of how to study because in the end everyone has to study on their own hmm. Hmm. nothing no one and nothing can put stuff into your head hmm. 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 you have to read you have to understand padhna to hame padhna hame and that how to study kaise padhna hai that is taught at fit ji wonderful wonderful and that thing helps you life long because going further on nobody teaches you how to do things so is it helping you in your current in your attitude De- yes definitely because there is absolutely no spoon feeding hmm, hmm, even further hmm. in life there will be no absolutely there no will not. and people expect you to fumble on your own and learn things on your own so that fumbling hmm, hmm, hmm. if you know how to study if you have a set of idea how to study that fumbling will be less you will be able to grasp things better faster you know how to grasp things hmm, hmm, hmm. take an example of a cricket that you are catching a ball so there is this uh, flower they make hmm, hmm. for catching a ball yes. right so yeah you have to learn how to make that flower hmm. because otherwise you'll just injure your fingers true so well so a very perfect example a very perfect example yeah so it's these simple things fundamental things that you should that fit the teachers us hmm. it gives a lifelong support that you can apply in your own way hmm. you they give you a very uh, good ma- they give it to you in a magic good manner that you can personalize it to your own self hmm. and apply it to yourself and going further on the line you can use it to hmm. grasp things better to wonderful. learn things faster wonderful. Wonderful. and then go on and further improve yourself and achieve better heights great 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 yeah um uh, and and beyond academics beyond academics how do you think uh, as as a personality is there any improvement in you after going through such a rigorous uh, preparation with fitji um the skills i'd say you learn at mm-hmm. fitji mm-hmm. um particularly critical thinking which is a very broad topic mm-hmm. so you do learn critical thinking uh, as a matter or as a manner in how to study mm-hmm. how to take things mm-hmm. so you learn that critical thinking aspect mm-hmm. of life mm-hmm. everywhere that critical thinking aspect impacts you it yes. helps you to you'll not take anything at face value you'll dig deeper mm-hmm. and as you dig deeper mm-hmm. you learn more things about it mm-hmm. you learn how to use that thing better take more informed decisions take more informed decisions take uh, uh, more decisions also because you'll have the idea okay i can also do this hmm hmm sometimes so it's an attitudinal not, change you're yeah, talking about sometimes things are not that visible if you just look over it hmm. if you deeply analyze it more things will come clear hmm. and okay i can do this this is better this is more uh, helpful to my goal hmm Hmm, hmm. so these things uh, even as a perspective perspective of personality interpersonal skills everything it develops you as a person hmm, hmm. and you can apply it lifelong lifelong it's a lifelong yeah, it's a lifelong yeah. and the other thing is that we learned at fit g would be the value system okay being ethical being true being transparent it gives you a sense of satisfaction with life okay it gives you that oh you're not doing something wrong and it is emphasized at fitji that you have to be transparent in things you have to be ethical in things unlike other centers i'll say that they poach students hmm. declare false results hmm. give hmm. false aspirations to student which true. again leads to stress true 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 very true very well said which again leads to stress which is the root cause of problems in our society very true and such transparent things ethical truthful manner realizing the potential only and not giving false hope that leads to a stress less environment hmm. Hmm. and motivates the person to do better to improve and not just break down very under true. that stress very true very true. that value system is not just important in academics or in terms of life goals 
in interpersonal relationships again i'll emphasize oh, yes. having a truthful relation relation i think is more important yeah. than that yes be communicative with your partner or friends or family and be truthful about them be honest with them wonderful wonderful very very well said very very well said very well said om dehlan zonal level player in handball all india rank 73 in itj third year computer science iit delhi having such wonderful thoughts about value systems about how to manage stress and tension gain some wonderful tips about those things one last uh, request to you what would you advise those aspirants who are currently aspiring to achieve something great in their life how to go about it what is your advice to them one thing um as aspirants there is any stream not just uh, going for jee i'm not particularly talking about jee mm-hmm. anywhere any goal in life first you have to find your interests particular interests are you interested in a field because if you are not interested in a field definitely you will not enjoy being there mm-hmm. and not enjoying being there and if you just mindlessly bhed chal mein jaoge udhar then it'll just lead to stress again so that distinction that you have to enjoy being somewhere so first find your interests then you have to set expectations on yourself but those should be reasonable how do you find reasonable expectations that would be through tests assessment scientific tools there will be many such things for i think in any such field there are certain benchmarks that you can find yourself uh, so that you can assess your potential and never put yourself under un- unreasonable expectations because again they lead to stress so have that reasonable expectation have that reasonable goal have the have a goal that you enjoy pursuing and then give your best find the right guidance hmm. is this is the next step hmm. the right guidance is something that teaches you how to achieve that goal and not just pulls you along hmm. the right guidance have has a corrective measures in place step by step they have those tools to measure uh, where you are going wrong the constant monitoring constant feedbacks and then ethics the value system again you you should follow the ethical path and you should find a guidance system that is ethical that is constantly giving you feedbacks that is giving you personalized feedbacks and not just you know a person lecturing to 100 people oh oh that that's not personalized you cannot give a personalized speech yeah, yeah, you cannot you cannot yeah, it's not possible so you have to find the right guidance system and that's quite clear the the things you look in a right guidance system as i've just mentioned and so with the right guidance system with the choice of interest and with a reasonable goal these these things are important to go anywhere in life not just je not commerce not arts anywhere and it will it's lead it leads on not not just after studying in career goals maybe in artistic goals that you have anything you you should have these three things right guidance as i mentioned the qualities choice of interest and a reasonable expectation scientifically assessed arrived at yeah very true thank you om thank you so very much for your uh, your very important words of advice for our future aspirants and uh, we really wish you all the very best and you may you grow beyond your dreams also in your career all the very best and thank you for sparing your time thank you was, glad to be here it was good to have you here glad to